Hello everyone and welcome to a special uh, a special Gen Con stream from the Untold Stories Project where we will be playing Suicide Squad all along the Watchtower. Uh, thank you for joining us for your weekly dose of superhero shenanigans. My name is Alex and I will continue to be your humble game master for this episode. Uh, tonight we will be playing Mutants and Masterminds, the world's greatest superhero RPG which is produced by Green Running Publishing. It is a D20 system that allows players to roleplay their favorite superhero stories in a satisfying narrative manner with a little bit of crunch for people who prefer that in their game systems. It also features hero points, which I really enjoy. They are a special resource players can use to elevate their character, usually to superheroic heights, but particularly scummy heights tonight. This takes the form of taking additional actions, increasing their strength or the ranks of their powers, editing the scene to have something suddenly useful be available, and allow heroes to use their abilities in creative ways. They're earned through good role-playing, uh, vivid descriptions, jokes I think are funny, jokes I think aren't funny, and from you, the audience. If you follow, <laughs> subscribe, or donate bits during the stream, you earn a hero point that you can give to the villain or game master of your choice. And, fun fact, it is September, so all of our subs are 20% off. Um, and if you're watching this playback on YouTube, please leave a comment on the video telling me your favorite moment and which hero you want to give a hero point to during our next session. I'll roll that over to Nether War if there's anybody who watches Nether War out there in the stream. Hey! <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Aaron. <laughs> um, I do have to begin tonight with a content warning. We are doing a Suicide Squad stream, which comes with oodles of mature rated baggage. Uh, these are bad people doing bad things for a bad government agency. Blood will be spilled and bombs will be effed, I'm sure of it. Uh, more specifically, there will be foul language, gore, body horror, allusions to drug use, and thematic elements in tonight's game. I don't know what thematic elements are, but they always include them, so I figured I should include them, too. Uh, we have gathered some questionable heroes tonight. Say hello, heroes. Hello, hello heroes. heroes. I want to give everyone a chance to tell us a little bit about themselves, the character they will be playing tonight, where else we can find them, and have them answer my question of the day. Which is, what crime do you wish you could commit without consequence? <sighs> Starting with Andy and we'll work our way down the line. So Andy, Aaron, Liz, Jonesy, Will, Calvin. And you couldn't have given us a heads up. Nope. nope. No, of course not. <clears throat> I'm Amanda Waller. <laughs> Hi, I'm Andy. I'm here on Monday nights for our Another War game. And that's usually where you can find me unless you come over to our YouTube channel where I host our StoryForge series. Still on a bit of a hiatus. Coming back soon, I promise. Tonight, I am playing Bloodsport, Robert Dubois. De facto leader of this band of miscreants and misfits, I guess. I'm not sure about that. I think I think Peacemaker might have something to say about that, but, you know, we don't care what he says. Yeah, I might have some <laughs> arguments. Yeah, you're just a cheap knockoff anyway, so it doesn't matter. <laughs> uh, to answer the question of the day, what crime do I wish I could get away with? Uh, geez. It's like telling, because if something ever happens... <laughs> <laughs> I mean, right? <laughs> Aaron knows what I'm talking about. It's like self-incrimination at a later point in time. It's going out there on the interwebs for everyone to, to, to follow. It's like, wait a second. Uh... You know, you just could have asked what superpower I would have enjoyed. Alex versus that one. Um, because I really can't think of one. <laughs> Put me on the spot, and I'm not much of a crime aficionado. And he's a good this, guy. I am a good guy, and I'm playing a very bad guy, so I don't, you know, this is going to be a fun evening. <laughs> you know, you totally could have gone with the easy answer of, like, I can speed with impunity. It's true. <laughs> oh, no, no, okay. It's like, let's do this one. I can speed through school zones with impunity because dear lord do the cops sit around the speed zones the school zones that's uh, <laughs> yeah no that was a, that, that's a crap one but you know we'll go with it thank you Aaron it's your turn no great thanks mm -hmm. hey everybody I'm Aaron um, you can find me here at Untold Stories Project on Tuesday nights, where at the moment I am still playing in the Tales of the Finest Blue Rose 5e game. Um, and shortly we'll be taking over Game Master duties for City of Destiny, our, I guess this is the announcement, as yet unannounced, uh, 
Emerald City Knights campaign playing in Mutants and Masterminds. That'll be starting up soon. Um, I am also the, although we're on hiatus, host and game master of our podcast, Something Something Dragons. So you can hear me most Fridays as I uh, take a group of uh, teens through their first Pathfinder adventure path. Um, tonight, I am playing Larry Croc, the Sportsmaster. Um, very heavily influenced by the current uh, Stargirl TV version of the character. And if there was one crime that I could commit with, you know, getting away with, it would 100% be vehicular assault. Not on people. I don't want to hurt people, but I would love it if I could just ram idiots on the road in front of me and get away with it. So. Good choice. Yeah. Dan Riz. Me? That's you. You. Cool. I'm Liz. Um, as far as USP, I am sort of behind the scenes more than the other people on our team. Um, but I'm the good moral support, so you all need that. Um, tonight, I am playing Rat Catcher, aka Cleo, and Crime. Well, um, Alex, I guess that is, um, that depends on what we consider a crime. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. <laughs> Why are you asking um, me? <laughs> because I'm all about the Robin Hood. Mm. Steal from the rich and give to the poor, so... Yeah. That's what I would do. Rob billionaires with impunity. I'm into it. Jonesy. Hey everyone, uh, I am Jonesy. Uh, I can be found here on Monday nights playing in Another War, where I play Mortis, our living dead guy. Uh, on Tuesdays, I'm currently the game master for the Untold Stories Project's uh, Tales of the Finest, our 5e Blue Rose game, which is uh, going to be wrapping up season one soon. Um, tonight, I'll be playing uh, uh, the Pied Paper, uh, for those of you who may have caught him on his multiple appearances on The Flash. Uh, I'm very excited about playing him. Uh, the crime I can get, uh, I would want to get away with. I would want to be able to kneecap politicians. Just kneecap? Yeah, that way they can still do their job, but I can kneecap with them if they're not doing their damn jobs. <laughs> mm. Hell yes. And, you can find uh, that. So, yeah. Are you imagining, like, being a sniper outside Capitol Hill, or more like walking up to them and sledgehammering them in the kneecaps? Misery style. I was, pic I was picturing a crowbar, uh, but, mm. yeah. Thank you. I didn't make that up, yes. Do, do your job. <laughs> I'm allowed to do this. It's my job. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the politician, Hopward. That's my supervillain name. Um, well, I don't know about the villain part. Hi friends, my name is Will. Um, I do stuff here at USP. I am in uh, Tuesday's Tales of the Finest right now. And um, uh, who I'm playing? I'm playing Abner Krill, who you might know as Polka Dot Man. Uh, so that'll be a lot of fun. And a uh, crime that I would commit if I could get away with anything. You know those tags on mattresses that say do not remove under penalty of law? <laughs> I just want to remove one once, so that before might not be the most interesting answer. Yeah, <laughs> but uh, yes. that's that's what I would pick. So that's Perfect. me, uh, and I will turn it over to Calvin. Okay. Uh, well, I am Calvin. Um, today I will be playing uh, the peacemaker, uh, the man who loves peace so much he's willing to fight for it. Um, Normally, I'm here every Monday on the Nether War stream playing Bowman. Um, I'm also over on the Win with Dice channel on YouTube, where we do weekly GM podcasts and uh, weekly gaming streams. So go check out me playing Skyrim for the first time ever. Um, as for the question of the day, what crime I could get away, I would like to get away with. I was gonna say speeding, but I feel like vehicular stuff is all covered. See, you are just a <laughs> copy of me. <laughs> I would speed faster. <laughs> Um, 
I'll say, as someone who recently started streaming video games and had a Nintendo game that I wanted to play, but I was super nervous that Nintendo would, I don't know, smash down my door and steal my computer, I would say whatever law prevents me from doing that or whatever allows them to be so litigious about it. That's a good one. You want to violate copyright law. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I just wanted to stream a Pokemon game. That wouldn't be so bad, would it? Exactly. This is why I don't get the purge. So many easier crimes. All right, I'm gonna go off on a tangent for a second about the purge. Uh -oh. <laughs> <laughs> the purge is set during tax time, so you could literally falsify your taxes for the purge and just bankrupt the government, and it's legal. It's great. Nobody ever does that. Everybody just wants to murder each other. Right? Like I, I I'm with you on this. Like, why is murder? The, the one crime everyone wants to get away with. Like, hey, I can put up the six-foot fence and not worry about the zoning laws today. You know? <laughs> I feel like there's so much you can do with that premise that I don't know why they come up with one thing. Don't stop at six-foot. Go all the way to 12-foot fence. <laughs> it, would, uh, it would make for a really bad franchise of movies. Oh, yeah. if everyone was <laughs> just doing their taxes. Right, but... <laughs> it wouldn't be as entertaining. Putting in a pool without having to, you know, put a privacy fence. Right? Yeah. Um, yeah. Also, thank you so much, Chrome Wiki, for subscribing with Prime. Um, I don't know if you heard, but that means you have a parole point that you can give to one of our parolees here tonight. <laughs> <laughs> They're like hero points, but for bad people. Um, and while Wiki is deciding who they want to give a, hero, a parole point to... The crime I would like to commit with impunity is also vehicle related, but it's, I never want to renew my license sticker again. I hate paying $66 a year for that stupid sticker on my license plate. It makes me so mad every time my birthday comes around. It's horrible. Yeah. You could just renew it for two years and, you know, not have to worry about it for a year. That's an expensive sticker. <laughs> it's true. Ugh. Makes me so mad. Just irrationally upset every time I go to the DMV. Don't go to the DMV to do that. Make do it online and have them send it to you. It's a little bit less annoying because then you don't have to wait in the line. Mm. That's fair. All right. Well, I think without further ado, we're good to get started, huh? Uh, we join our heroes in the bowels of Bell Rev Penitentiary, deep within the sweaty bayous of Louisiana. Uh, just a ragtag collection of villains enjoying the great hospitality of the United States government. Um, we sort of pan through the cell box, down through the various personal cells of each member of the Suicide Squad, and I'd like each of you to go through um, and just tell me what crime you committed that got you locked up in here, and which hero was responsible. Uh, starting with Bloodsport. Uh, well, we won't go with what the movie did because, you know, it's already been used. So let's let's think about this. I would say at this point in time, Bloodsport is in jail for basically working as a as a hitman for one of the more seedier governments and was tasked with basically destabilizing a peace summit between the two between two nations the one that the let, let's say bialia didn't want uh peace between them so he went in to break it up and of course the batman was there hate that guy hate that guy he hates peace <laughs> Awesome. So Bloodsport was trying to break up peace summons between Bialy and another nation. Batman said, knock it off. What did Sportsmaster no, no. do? Oh, okay. Between two nations that Bialya didn't want to have peace. Mm -hmm. He was hired by Bialya to go mess with, like, Karak and Markovia. Yep. Awesome. What about Sportsmaster? Uh, so Sportsmaster was, uh, you know chilling with his other buds in the Injustice Society. Um, we were uh, 
doing our 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 level best to uh well look i'll be honest i didn't really understand all the technical details behind uh, icicles plan i don't really need to that's not my department but uh <laughs> damn justice society showed up and uh you know i got a good uh lick in on a green lantern because you know that stupid ring's still vulnerable to wood and Beautiful slugger to the head still works just fine against him. But uh, then Starman comes out of nowhere, blasts me from behind, cheating little. It's fine. It's fine. Here, at least Artemis is free. It's all fine. This is fine. I'm fine. fine. How are you? Awesome. What about Ratcatcher? Um, something petty. Like, she, um, I would say, like, kept stealing just this random guy's, um, like, motorbike, but just this same person. That's brutal. Because he was annoying and, like, called her rats vermins, so... Awesome. Who arrested you? Um, I don't know. Maybe it wasn't a superhero. Maybe it was just like a regular off-the-street cop. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, 100%. Um, I was going to say, like, it was not, like, a specific person, but it definitely wasn't, um... Oops, sorry. Oh, no worries. Wiki says you kept releasing all the feeder rats at Pet's Park. <laughs> awesome. So the police booked you and they dragged you in, locked you up in Bell Rev, probably on some trumped up charges from Amanda Waller. Pied Piper. I think I know who arrested you. Yeah, probably. One of them. <laughs> one, of, one of those guys. Right? Um... <laughs> They seem to multiply like rats. Oh, no, no offense, my Um, <laughs> uh, I'm stuck in Belt Rev because uh, I had an altercation with another member of the Rogues Gallery, and I left him in a full body cast in the hospital. So. Uh, but uh, the Flash took offense of us having an all-out war between us in uh, Central City. So, awesome. Polka dot man. I attacked a woman who I thought was my mom. Um, she wasn't my mom, and I felt really bad about it, so I turned myself in. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, awesome. And Peacemaker. Um, as a lover of peace, I'm actually kind of imagining that I was on the opposite side of the events that Bloodsport was part of. <laughs> While he was there to disrupt the talks, Peacemaker, who was probably hired based on name alone and not reputation, pardoned by one of the two nations, was brought in as security. Uh, and it very quickly devolved into a very explosive battle just between the two of them that demolished whatever building this was supposed to be taking place in. Oh, man. So Batman yeah. brought you in, too? Yeah, it's weird that that Bruce Wayne guy showed up and then got out of there so fast. <laughs> <laughs> Peacemaker so observant. <laughs> awesome. So you've all been there for a various amounts of time. Some of you the same amount of time, from the sound of things. <laughs> and um, one hot, sweaty summer day, a couple of guards come to each of your cells and they take you down to the secret basement of Bell Rev that some of you have been to before. Um, Amanda Waller's little petting zoo where she takes supervillains off to go do the bad things that she wants done. Uh, they take you down to a doctor who looks surprisingly like John Ostrander, who puts a bomb in your head. And they bring you down to Amanda Waller's briefing room, where she is sort of annoyed to see all of you. Uh, she's standing at the lectern, there's a big projector up, you're all 
out waiting to hear what mission Task Force X is about to be dispatched to. Uh, she pulls up a uh, projector image of Mexico, and she kind of cycles through a couple of things, and she says, uh, Earlier this evening, an Argus convoy was ambushed uh, by Bane in the Secret Six. We don't know how he got information about this convoy, but there was some very important... Um, some very important experimental technology within that container that Bane tried to make off with, but the Justice League arrived in time to stop him. Your mission is to go down and secure the site that the Justice League left behind for the Policia Federal Ministerial, uh, secure the area and recover the black box of the lead vehicle as well as a lockbox with the word splinter written on the side. You're authorized to use any force necessary. Any questions? Why exactly? You could throw anything at this because you're the friggin' government, Waller. Why do you need us to do this? Uh, it's not necessarily in America's best interest if we send American soldiers down to cross me the Mexican border and see something from their private police. Uh, no, that's why you have the FBI or the, uh, the or this. A ATF. This is too important to trust to a conventional organization. Well, we're anything if unconventional. Well, well it's also because if the Justice League takes an interest... Waller doesn't want to start a war between the Justice League and the U.S. government. We're expendable. <laughs> see, Sportsmaster's no, been reading the literature. Don't get, don't put it in her head because she already put it in ours. <laughs> oh, I just don't get it, Waller. This makes no sense. The Justice League already took care of the problem. No, they took care of Bane. I need to make sure they didn't get anything that was inside that convoy. And if they did steal whatever was in that convoy, the mission parameters will change. If you accomplish this mission, you will get five years off of your multiple life sentences. Where at and how many forces are you expecting to already be on site? Uh, it's in the desert um, just east of Mexico City. We anticipate that the PFM will have a number of agents on hand um, performing, you know, securing the area and checking on a couple of the vehicles and recovering any of the bodies that were left by Bane in Secret Six. Generally, they don't operate with more than 10 to 15 officers on something like this. Right, well, I guess the sooner we're out, the sooner we're back, so... Seems any seems straightforward enough. When are these missions ever straightforward? Uh, quick question. Who's the field lead on this mission? Bloodsport. Wonderful. I would like to raise a complaint. <laughs> no, Noted. She doesn't care, Peacemaker. Well, we'll see what happens when we get out there. Yeah, what Pied Piper said. Can we go? Yeah, if you don't have any further questions, you're free to go. We'll be monitoring the situation remotely, as always, and don't step out of line. You do have bombs in your heads. All of this for stealing a motorcycle? Seriously? It's a very expensive motorcycle. God. <laughs> Look, Bruce Wayne wasn't happy about it. Alright, so you all load up and uh, pop up into the V22 Osprey that flies you guys off. It's about a five hour flight. Uh, is there anything preparation-wise you're looking to do while you are on route? 
Uh, I would like ma I would like to get maps of the area, see how far out from the city we are, see what if see what's already set up, what they've already you know like what kind of canvassing they're already doing. Mm -hmm. Where's their location? Where's their uh, basically field headquarters located? Yeah, they can patch you into a uh, Argus satellite. Uh, that shows you sort of the surrounding desert area. Uh, it looks like there's a number of wrecked vehicles. Um, looks like uh, two cars, an SUV, and an APC were the Argus vehicles. They seem to be unmarked. Um, some of them have been flipped over. Some of them are still sort, of, still sort of smoldering with a fire that was set by probably dead shot from the sound of things. Uh, it looks like the agents, the PFM agents, have... Uh, how many of you are there? Six? So there are three SUVs um, with PFM logos on the side. There's also a medical examiner's van at the scene. Looks like they're processing bodies and loading them up. Right. Uh, it doesn't look like they have much of a field um, headquarters. It looks like this is sort of like a secure the area, collect the bodies, and call the tow truck sort of situation. Okay. Um, you can see signs of the fight in the desert. You can see where uh, there was clearly a struggle between superpowered individuals out there. There's sort of craters in various rock formations. Lots of things that have been thrown around. Dust, but dust has been kicked up. And Bloodsport will look at the rest of the group. This doesn't seem like a smash and a grab for us. This seems more like a search and recover, if at all possible. So, can we do this quietly for once? Looking at Peacemaker. I do everything quietly. You're the one who raises the volume. Actually, that's me. <laughs> <laughs> that's a fair point. Why I'm here. Yeah, actually, I'm actually I'm actually glad you're here, Cleo. Um, we could use you to scout things out, or your furry little friend there. He has a name. His name is Sebastian. He waves at you. I was as friendly as I was going to be. That's fair. He's adorable. Give him a chance. Let's for it. Okay. Um, Cleo passed the time during the drive, like making him a new, like, little vest and pouch and stuff. <laughs> and, like, little goggles. Oh. Are they, like, polka dot man's goggles? Uh, no, they're, like, to protect him from, like, the wind and stuff. Hmm. Awesome. Um,. I'd like to go ahead and um, send him out on a scout. Yeah, so um, we'll sort of fast forward to when the plane drops you guys off. Uh, they drops you off in the Mexican desert about three clicks from your objective, uh, a little bit after midnight. Um, your objective being the secret Argus convoy. Um, this is all non-relevant flavor text you wrote, Alex. Why did you do this? <laughs> um, yeah, so, uh, Cleo, you want to send Sebastian out to scout ahead before everybody else is going? It is a three-kilometer walk, so there is time for Sebastian to go and come back before everybody else gets there. Yeah, that'd be good. Awesome. So he'll skitter out um, as you're all sort of walking through the cold desert night. He comes back and he uh, skitters over to Cleo and starts uh, informing you that... Uh, the area, sure enough, has 14 of uh, these PFM agents around, as well as two medical examiners at the scene. Um, he says that he saw a couple of bodies being loaded up into the medical examiner's van. And give me a perception check for Sebastian, Cleo. If you're going to walk, I'm going to hang back and get close to Bloodsport so I can talk to Bloodsport. Uh, 
Cleo make her roll, and we can handle that afterwards. Yeah, but sorry you have two character sheets. <laughs> what did Sebastian get? Sebastian got an 18 for perception. Awesome. He will say to you that he did see a couple of the bodies were wearing costumes. Um, he doesn't recognize the people inside, but one of them was wearing a red and white, um, looks like military suit, and the other one was wearing a golden black sort of checkered, almost like a Harlequin suit. Harlequin, not Harlequin. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but like, you said costume. Mm-hmm. Like it's it like, like a Halloween costume or like a like a supervillain costume. Cool. Do I know these guys? Um, you can give me an expertise streetwise check. Cool. And if you share that information with the group, anybody else has expertise streetwise or expertise mercenary can make a check as well. But that's up to Cleo. Let's see if I know it first. And that's a 21. With a 21, you definitely know that the person in the red and the white suit is Deadshot, uh, who has been in the Suicide Squad before, but most recently has been in Bane's Secret Six, which is another villainous organization. So they look dead? Um, Sebastian says that they're loading them up into the dead people fan. Hmm. I'll relay that information. No, that doesn't seem right, because as we all know, the supers don't murder. It doesn't seem like a super. We know the Justice League was here. They were fighting with Bane's Secret Six. Deadshot's one of the Secret Six. Not so secret. <laughs> um... Did you share the rest of the info with us to see if we know who the other one is? Yes. All right, I'll make a mercenary check. That's a 15, so I probably don't know the other one. Oh, yeah, you're not familiar with the with the name. All right. Or the the costume. Usually Piper, when you hear Harley Quinn, you think Harley Quinn. Mm-hmm. Piper, what can I do for you? Well, when we get there, we have to deal with the... The place I got in my turban. And I look I over at I look over at Peacemaker when I say that. I well, like they don't this. make it necessary. I want this to be quiet, but all possible. But I would like to find out what the heck happened to Deadshot and the other one in the in the van. You think you can get over there and scope it out a bit without arousing too much suspicion? Probably not, but if we need to subdue the, the, the guards, I'd rather... Uh, I'd rather attempt it than... Because I can knock them out before them. Well, All the medical examiners are going to be less of a threat to you than to than going after the, you know, federales there. Because, you know, they're not going to have weapons. <sighs> Right, well, we should get on with it then. Uh, Sebastian didn't find anything about our missing equipment, or Waller's missing equipment, did he? He looks at Cleo like I can't read. I don't know what's written on the, on the crates. <laughs> we're, right. we're working on it, okay? <laughs> right, well... He holds up one fish, two fish, one fish, two fish. Other than those of us that cause the distractions of a nature that are obviously going to draw back up, anybody else got any bright ideas to distract them so we can get in to take a look at things? And by distract, I don't mean kill, Peacemaker. 
that wasn't going to be my first suggestion. Also, thank you. I was thinking about it. Also, thank you, Garad and Navad, for following. Uh, you do have a parole point you can give to one of our squad mates if you're uh, if you're interested. Just share in chat whoever it is. Abner, you're being awfully quiet tonight. I was going to mention I might have a little bit of um, distraction up my sleeve, um, and I will <laughs> show these huge polka dots that are kind of um, they'll start shining a little bit um oh. they can hurt or they can uh well you know what they can do yeah um oh. can you just do something bright and flashy sure Good. like now no <laughs> maybe not right now <laughs> okay over there in a minute let's let's come up with a plan we know where we want to go so the big, and you said it was a, a APC. APC, yep. Yeah, the APC probably has what we're looking for, and we need to get a look at what the heck happened to Deadshot and the other costumed Secret Six member that we is actually secret. So twofold, that's what we need to do. I would like a distraction so the Federales focus on that rather than us. Because I don't want to be here for much longer than we need to be, and I'd rather not expend any extra effort on this task than absolutely need it. So, distraction, split into two groups. One take the APC, look for Waller's tech. The other head to the medical vans and see what the hell happened to Deadshot. I don't know that it matters what happened to Deadshot, but okay, if you were nervous. I'm not <laughs> nervous. But if they got in the fight with the Justice League and he ended up dead, something's not right. Yeah, it's not like the capes to leave somebody bleeding. I think it means they're taking peace seriously. And that the Secret Six needs to change their name. Or hire two more people. <laughs> well, you're not getting out of Waller's service that easily. Oh, no. Okay, so I'm going to move us over to the new map. All right. As you all approach uh, the desert at night, you guys are down here in the bottom right corner. You all are free to proceed as you wish. All right, so who wants to split up to do what? I would like to go to the medical, uh, the medical van. I'm assuming Pied Piper is coming with me for that because he expressed interest in it. Um... I can Some... check out the uh, APC for the black box. Okay. Well, I've got or work. the um, locked box. I think black box and the crate with the tech in it. Oh, would they both be in there? Probably. Probably, okay, okay. yeah. I thought Some... a separate vehicle. All right. So somebody should probably go with him. I'll and... go with uh, Peacemaker. Okay. And somebody should probably stay with Polka Dot Man just to make sure that nobody does anything crazy to him. Well, also, I, can't you use your rats to help create a distraction too? I could, if you ask nicely. Pretty please. Uh, See, I, we can go. Do we have to have so many rats? I mean, the one is bad enough. Well, you know they're everywhere, right? Not helping. <laughs> Dubois Never is about it. to figure out how many rats live in the Mexican desert. <laughs> I can't see them. I don't care. <laughs> Never I can't to hear them. Again. I don't care. Isn't it worse to not see them but to know they're there? Yes. Now that you've mentioned it. <laughs> Do you know how many live underneath you? No, and, and I was happy with there. that naivete. I'm sure it's a lot. <laughs> I'm like, Shut they're up. so cute with their little paws and like, Shut up! Really Let's get on with the goddamn mission already! <laughs> awesome. All I'd right. rather go back to Bell Rev and, and soak in the friggin' Louisiana sauna. Um, there's while... rats there too. <laughs> there's rats there too. 
while we're um, while we're getting ready to jump in on these poor Mexican federales, um, can everybody check their advantages real quick and let me know who has the luck advantage? I know um, I do. I forgot to do everybody their luck points at the beginning. I, I don't. When you're as good as me, you don't need luck. I've got skill. That's true. Pretty much. Um, I don't have an excuse, but I also don't have luck. <laughs> 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 well, seems about right for. Peaceful, so. <laughs> seems, I mean, seems about right for poor little Abner. So. Does Abner seem lucky to you? <laughs> No. Nope. Days, probably. <laughs> um, I'm a superhero. Splat. <laughs> Andy, you do have um, luck control as a power, being the group oh. leader. So I did give you uh, three points of that. So you do have the ability to um, to give your friends rerolls. Ah, uh, yes, I see it on my character sheet. I did not really look at my power section. Yeah, your power is I'm no fucking leader. <laughs> mm-hmm. I have beginner's luck. You know, you don't have to only give it to your friends either. You can give it to your allies and teammates. They don't have to be friends. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say. <laughs> well, I know who's not getting it. <laughs> <laughs> not necessary. <laughs> <laughs> Make my own luck. Awesome. Wiki says form a protective circle around Abner. <laughs> There's already a protective circle around It's right there on the screen. <laughs> Um, okay. Somehow I, think that's circles. A, somehow I think that's a targeting circle. <laughs> so you um. So your plan is to split up and have some of you go check the APC and some of you go check and see what happened to Deadshot. Um, while the others c create the distraction. While yes. the others create the distraction. Okay. So I will start with the distraction team. What are you doing to make a distraction? Sure. I um. <laughs> I have the inventor. Uh, advantage. Mm -hmm. I'm going to try and make out of both my polka dots and you know whatever scrap metal I can kind of find in this debris. I'm going to try and make like uh, polka dot grenades that don't do any like harm, but just make really bright um, like explosions of color and things like that. Awesome. Yeah, that sounds great. Um. I won't make you spend a hero point or anything like that. You're just basically this is going to be a use of. Um, we're going to call it a power instead of a deception check because I don't think you're very good at deception. <laughs> um, so go ahead and give me a d20 plus 12 for your polka dots. Sure. And then what is. Um, Cleo is also part of the distraction team, is that right? Yes. What are you doing to add to the distraction? Um, so you're just going to kind of, like, make, um, like, little tiny groups of rats, like, scatter, like, under their feet. Awesome. But not, like, all at once, like, three or four here, and then, like, three or four there, and... Awesome. That sounds like a use of your create power, so go ahead and give me a d20 plus your create ranks, which I think is five. I got a uh, 29 for that. 20 plus 12. It's 5. The 21. Awesome. So your all's distraction is awesome. It's very effective. Um, you're able to pull pretty much the entire armed force of the Federales away from the scene. Um, go ahead and give me a, just a narrative description of what happens. Uh, sure. I, I like to think of them as kind of like ground fireworks. So they just kind of uh, like roll around uh, everybody and kind of explode. Um, yeah, like kind of big sweeping arcs of, um, of polka dots and colors. And uh, yeah, I'm, I imagine some rats are running through them. <laughs> totally. They're pretending to be scared of the mm. fireworks. Awesome. So the colors are going off, boom, the federales are swearing in Spanish all over the place, running away or towards the side of the distraction, which leaves our two teams 
able to perform whatever action they're looking to perform as they sneak ahead. Um, who's going to the APC? That would be me and Peacemaker. Awesome. Sportsmaster Peacemaker. Um, you guys give me a stealth check as you make your way over there. I'll give you a plus five uh, circumstance bonus for the wonderful distraction put on my Polka Dot Man and Rat Hunter 2. Alright. Stealth check with a plus five. Uh... I rolled a 23, plus 5 is 28. Awesome. I have a 30, which that includes the plus 5. Okay. So you both sneak over there, quick as you like. Uh, you head over to the APC, which definitely has a Bane-sized hole in the side of it, and a scene of carnage within. Uh, looking in, you see blood stains, the ransacked interior, and it looks like the medical examiner hasn't yet been able to remove the bodies of a couple of guards in black riot gear. Um, go ahead and give me perception checks as you take a look through this mess. Or investigation, whichever's higher. They are the same. Got a 24 on perception there. 19. Awesome. Uh, so together, it looks like the black box appears to be intact on the APC, but there are no crates within that seem to be marked with the word splinter on the side. Okay. Uh, before you can look further, we're going to jump over to the medical examiner's office. Medical examiner's van with mm -hmm. Bloodsport and uh, Pied Piper? Is that who's called? Yep. Give me stealth checks. Again, with the plus five circumstance bonus. Okay. Uh, 24 with the 5 built in. Awesome. We pull it up five built in. <laughs> Roll twenty's enjoying you guys tonight. Yeah, they're being he's being very, very kind. <laughs> for now. Yeah, for now. Um so yeah, as you guys are moving around, will you guys move your tokens just sort of on the map to where they are as as we're moving? Sure, I'm assuming the medical van is down in the left. Yep, as this bad boy over here. And the APC is the thing kind of center and on fire. Yep. I guess we're probably around the back of it. I would assume, yeah. And uh, Liz, you have a token for you and Sebastian, so Sebastian can be somewhere else from where you are if you'd like. Um, but Bloodsport and Pipe Piper, you guys are easily able to sneak over to the medical examiner's van. Uh, looking inside, you do see there are a couple of bodies within. Um, they're sort of... Usually they would have, like, one body and they'd put it up on a table in the middle of it, but they've kind of stacked a few on top of each other, uh, just on the left and the right side of this big uh, panel van. Uh, on the examiner's table itself in the center, strapped in, you do see the bodies of uh, what looks like Deadshot and the person in the black and yellow um, Harlequin costume. Right. What are we looking for? Specifically, do you think? We're looking for, for you know, signs of what kind of weapon or ability to take a Deadshot. I mean, his armor is heavily reinforced, it's bulletproof pretty much. I'm guessing I don't recognize who the other person is. Um, Jonesy's pretty sure he knows who it is, but what kind of skill would you like to roll to see? Uh, uh, do you have well informed, Pied Piper? Let me go check. I, I also don't recall. Uh, no, I don't. Okay. Um, go ahead and just give me a flat, uh, flat investigation check. Fifteen. Uh, you're not sure who it is. You're sort of looking in, um, looks like they've got bells on their boots, but hard to tell other than that. Well, that's a stupid design choice for let the supers know where you're coming. 
Some some of them aren't very subtle. Have you ever met Trickster? Uh, don't get me started on that. On that one. Too many whoopee cushions. Only chickens are the ones I could it's three. He's not using Joker's Joy Buzzer. Right, job to do. Let's take a look at these. Uh, take a look around the van. I'll take a look at Deadshot. Awesome. Um, you peel back the white curtain that's on top of him. Go ahead and give me a treatment check. Woohoo. I crit. Wow. The 22. <laughs> I didn't crit. I had a 23. <laughs> so uh, both of you sort of look at him over. He doesn't appear to have, um, as you're looking through, there doesn't appear to be many um, external wounds. Um, you're looking through. He's got a couple of bruises, a couple of scrapes. But as you peel back um, part of his chest plate, um, it looks like there's these sort of black necrotic veins moving through um, his chest, and they seem to pulsate a little bit. Bloody hell. And as you say that, Bloodsport, um, all of you can hear a sound like cracking glass as the bodies in your various locations twist and contort. Um, one of them snarls at you as its head rotates upside down to look at you in the dim light of the wreck, and they spring forth to attack. Everybody, roll for initiative. Click your token first. Yes, click your token first. 